All right, so now I come to the question of labeling stereoisomers. So it seems a little bit arbitrary how we might distinguish two handed objects, right? So we have we all have two hands and we call one right and we call one left, but there's nothing really intuitively structural about the hands that leads us to say, "Oh, that's definitely that's clearly right-handed." because of some outside influence. Those labels are essentially just due to the hands and nothing else. So how do we distinguish the two hands spatially and how do we name the two hands? Essentially what we have to do is arbitrarily call them by a name. So we might call, and the, the names that chemists use are the R and S labels. So R refers to one hand of molecule, S to another. So consider the asymmetric carbon atom with four different groups. Let's use the example we used before. Essentially what we need to do for this is pick, first of all, an absolute point of reference. So if you're looking at your hands, you would need to pick, for instance, whether you were looking at the palms or the back of your hands. Once you decided on that, then you have an absolute sort of point of view where you can say, okay, one finger is on one side of another finger, for instance. So on your left hand, if you're looking at your palms, the left index finger is to the left of your middle finger on the left hand side. However, on your right hand, that index finger is to the right. So we can spatially distinguish the hands by fixing them in an absolute point of reference, then looking at the positions of the fingers. And that's essentially what we do with asymmetric carbons as well. So the convention is we fix the absolute point of reference so that the H is going back into the plane of the page. Excuse me. And then, once we have that, we look at the other three substituents and their, first of all, their priorities and the rotation of those priorities as we go around. So the most general procedure is we take a carbon with four different substituents, a stereogenic carbon like that, and we prioritize the substituents based first of all on atomic number and then based after, if atomic number doesn't do the trick, then we look for the number of higher atomic number atoms attached, the number of, for instance, carbons or oxygens attached, and we just go down the line until we can prioritize one substituent over the other. So in this very simple example, the highest priority would go to bromine, the largest atom, followed by chlorine, fluorine, and hydrogen. And then the convention is to place the lowest priority substituent, that hydrogen, going back into the plane of the page. Once we do that, then we would have the substituents of priority 1, 2, and 3 left over. And really, there are only two ways for these substituents to be oriented. One way is to have the three substituents going around in a counterclockwise direction, as we have here. And then if I switched, for instance, the fluorine and the chlorine, then we would have the 1, the 2, and the 3 going around in a clockwise direction. And I'll just label that in red sort of this light red. And these are the two possible enantiomers of this compound. So if we switch the two substituents, we would obtain the other stereoisomer. So what we're looking at then must be what's called the S stereoisomer. We know that because the rotation of the other substituents is counterclockwise. When the rotation is clockwise, we have the R stereoisomer. In this particular case, it's counterclockwise, so we have the S enantiomer of this compound. All right, so I'm going to redraw that over here by the S designation. And then keep in mind that I, uh, I mentioned in order to exchange or interchange, I should say, the two stereoisomers, all we have to do is interchange two substituents. So I'm going to leave it exactly the same for the bromine, the carbon, and the hydrogen. But then I'm going to switch the chlorine and the fluorine. 
And now we have a situation where we still have the four, the fourth or the lowest priority going back, but then we have one, two, three clockwise in this correct orientation of putting the hydrogen back. And so this is the R stereoisomer. So it's a good idea to get accustomed to how to do this. Putting the hydrogen, the lowest priority substituent, back is critical because if you don't do that, then you'll get the opposite rotation that the convention specifies. So if we flipped this molecule upside down, and I would invite you to imagine this in your mind as I talk about it, so that the hydrogen is pointing directly towards us, then we would actually observe counterclockwise rotation from the bromine to the chlorine to the fluorine, which would erroneously lead us to the conclusion that this was the S stereoisomer. So it's critical to place that lowest priority substituent back. That's really where picking an absolute point of reference comes into play here. When you do that, and then you look at the positions of the substituents, which basically boils down to looking, do they rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, then you'll properly be able to specify R and S.